Hey everybody, this is Pete Wenzel and today I'm going to show you how to get realistic light sources into your scene by using environment lightning in Blender. How to get to the colorized landscape will not be part of this video. So if you're interested in this topic, check out my linked video. The initial issue is that we could not see appropriate colors without light. Introducing light we need to define our point of view. Therefore we add a camera with shift A, select camera. Then we find a good position in the viewport and move the camera to this position via Control alt 0 If you're not happy with the first try, just do it again or adjust the camera rotation while in camera view mode. So adding a point light using shift A light point light and move it into our scene. And that's it. This was a pretty fast tutorial. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. In most cases you can play with these light settings and move your light source around in your scene, but it will always look fake. Unless you're using small LEDs within your set, my recommendation is to say goodbye to point lights. They are too small and create too sharp shadows. Remove it. Area lights solve all of these problems. but set up a three-point lighting and adjust all three lights could be pretty difficult and time-consuming. That's the reason why I would like to introduce your new best friend called environment lighting. In theory we will add a 360 degree panorama image to be our background and a middle light. Depending on your needs you can use many different panorama images. But for this video I will use a free panorama from Polygon, which represents an easy to use three-point lighting. I will highlight that I am not associated with the Polygon website, but it's very useful and therefore I will put a link into the video's description. In the context menu select world and click at the little dot at the right side of color and choose environment texture. Open a new image and browse your PC for your image. I will use the HDR version of the image, but this workflow will work with all other formats as well. You just need other strength values. We will see our image at the background. The intensity of our environment image could be adjusted by changing the strength value. In most cases the orientation of our image is not exactly what we currently want for our scene. Therefore we need to rotate it. Split the window and change the new one to shader editor. Then change the shader type from object to world. Now we see our world material instead of our object material. To rotate it we need to adjust the input vector to our image node. Instead of searching for the right nodes to add, we will use an add-on which does it for us. To activate it go to Edit, Preferences, Add-on, search for Node Wrangler and enable it. Then you can close the window. If you like this video share it with your friends, give me a thumb up and feel free to ask further questions in the comments below. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. If we now select the image node and press Ctrl T, the needed nodes are added and connected automatically with each other. All we have to do is adjusting the Z rotation until we get the desired lighting for our scene. If you're happy with your result, I would recommend to disable the visualization of the environment in the viewport. To do this make sure you're using cycles, then go to world, expand the ray visibility and toggle the camera. After recalculating the scene 
the background will disappear in the viewport. Nice! Now we are all a little bit more illuminated. And that would be the end of this tutorial. In the next video I will show you how to grow some grass into your scene. Now you have reached the end of this video. But this doesn't mean you have to talk to real people. You may be interested in my new video over there. Or you could watch this recommended video. And as a last opportunity, there are many more videos for you at my channel.